Market Monday. We back. We back. We back. Yes. yes. What's the Happy deal? Monday. Best show on earth. For sure. How you doing? I'm good, man. How you feeling? Feeling good. The sun's out. I got a few calls this weekend. <laughs> Damn. They're like, yo, what happened? I tried. I tried. But, you know, this show must go on. Uh, shout out to y'all. Shout out to everybody who did right in Atlanta. You know what I mean? <laughs> Shout out to Houston, man. We still we still love the city of Houston. Yeah, have many yep. things planned for the city. We love you. This, this is not this yeah. is not the end all be all. For sure, for sure. Nah, you know we um uh, yeah well yeah I'm glad you said that. If you if you if you didn't know, if you haven't heard Invest Fest back in Atlanta this year, year four. Yes. Um, we're going for the four peat, August twenty third to August twenty fifth. We'll be announcing lineup surprises well we can't announce the surprises but we'll be, we'll be announcing a lot of different things but um shout out to the city of atlanta for um embracing us we had a dope press conference we got to give away some money we got to highlight a vendor we spoke the mayor gave a few words um Amazing. for sure for yeah. sure so uh and i can't say the check that y'all wrote the money's actually going to go to the person <laughs> <laughs> No, did that's it. a fact. <laughs> <laughs> On delivery, <laughs> uh, special delivery, <laughs> special delivery, man. Yeah, it, we actually got a dope story about that. So I'll wait. I'll wait to tell that story, like maybe like next week. But uh, okay, she's she's super dope. Um, it's a it's a good it's a good uh feel good story to to that whole giveaway situation. So I think people are will be encouraged when they hear the full the full story. Always good to do good always good to do good that's life's golden rule yeah you can do good and do good but yeah but um get your tickets investfest.com and then um if you in red panda we're gonna give ian a, his his own link as well for his community so uh Let's that'll be spread within the, within the pandas but i uh, just know yeah the, the come on what do you what do you call the pandas is that is that pandas or, or the rebellion the rebellion okay. the rebellion ah. the rebellion will have a, a cheaper price than than general yeah. public uh just know so another perk of being a red panda rebellion soldier Mem soldier i'll say say member. red panda soldier like no limit oh man all right um <clears throat> this week we got blackout i want to talk about that for a minute because um <laughs> when you think of blackout who's who's the person that you think about right like Who's the person if you if you had a if you just had to just close your eyes and the word blackout came across your desk, um, who would you think of first? Me personally, uh Kanye West and then our guest that we haven't on this week. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a, that's from a, the same family tree. Yeah, so we got um we got Dame Dash. For this week's episode of Black, I'm telling you, do not want to. <laughs> should I start the show with the hoodie? You don't want to miss. <laughs> Please do. Miss this one. You don't want to miss this one, man. Dane Dash lived up to the name of the show. Let's just say oh, that. Crazy. Oh boy, he will live up to the name of the show. Blackout. Oh boy. Peace to Dane. Uh, the thoughts and views expressed <laughs> in the show. Disclaimer: We might have to put that to be careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The lower third. That's Public a apologies to those caught up in this <laughs> <laughs> today, man. Firing. Wednesday, 10 o'clock, Eastern Standard Time. And uh, earn your leisure tomorrow. We got Ingrid Best, super dope entrepreneur. We're finishing Women's Month with another woman. We had women all month. All month. She's uh, She has a wine business. I best wine. Based out of South Africa. Shout out to Africa. Um, And yeah, that's a really dope story. She's from America, moved to South Africa, started a wine. You know, South Africa has one of the best wine refineries in the world. It's one of the best wine regions. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. So, shout out to uh, yeah, one of the best vineyards in yep. the world. So, shout out to her. That's tomorrow at 1 o'clock. And the last thing I'll say is, Ernie Alicia University, we got a super dope um, class this Thursday. <laughs> it's a real estate master class. Okay. And, um, but... <laughs> Guess who's teaching the, the real estate master class? We don't just get any social media it, it, guru because I hear y'all. I hear what y'all say. Oh, they're getting social media gurus. Uh, heard you. Surprise. Heard you. <laughs> heard you. Master classes can only be taught by mastery. Heard you. <laughs> People of mastery. We have a billionaire that will be teaching the class. His name is Donahue Peebles. Might have heard of him. Yes. 
he will be teaching a class that's very rare. That's and, rare. Um, <laughs> it's extremely you rare. Think? So uh, Thursday. ABC Thursday. Really? <laughs> that's uh, Ian, Ian, announcements. Yes. Um, imagine like if in 2021, Nancy Pelosi would have told you to invest in NVIDIA, right? So if you missed out on last week's Stock Club sale, uh, go to ianinvest.com and you can join us. We had our call this Saturday, amazing two hours of fire. Um, the prediction of the CEO of Boeing stepping down. We talked about that. That happened today. Um, but if you want to know what, what, what to buy, what retirement picks to invest in, know when the company is going to fall apart, part, join the stock club, go to ianinvest.com, sign up at joinredpanda.com. And if I made you money, please put yes in chat. Get your tickets to Invest Fest. If you're in Red Panda, wait for the link so you can get a discount. If you already bought them, don't email me. Ah, ah, ah. I got you. <laughs> at VIP night or something. So, <laughs> uh, it up year four, Leah Dynasty. Back at it. All right, so we got a um, we we got a very special guest today. Absolutely, his name is Wyclef John. You might have heard of him, perhaps. Uh, we're on a high level situation these days. Um, mm -hmm. Don Peebles, Wyclef, Dame Dash, you know, people like that. Some people that we so, know. So, um, we, he's going to talk about the crisis in Haiti. Very important situation to talk about. Yeah. Um geopolitical issues are extremely important but before we talk about that we're going to talk about some things but disclaimer let's do it let's do it you know how this works man do your own research our content is intended to be used it must be used for informational purposes only it's very important to do your own analysis before making any investment based on your own personal circumstances you should take independent financial advice from a professional in connection with or independently research and verify any information that you here on our show and wish to rely upon whether for the purpose of making an investment decision or otherwise. This is a message brought to you by the good brothers at Earn Your Leisure and the good brother Ian Dunlap, the master investor himself. Shout out to everybody that's doing the research. Shout out to everybody that pulled up on us this weekend and telling us about the research they've been doing and all the gains that they've been making. Ian, if they, if there's a request out here for you, man. There's a request out here for you. Every time we walk in the space, Every time we walk in this space, they're like, yo, why I ain't bringing with you? I'm like, yeah, he, he, he lives in Houston, y'all. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to you, man. Shout out to everybody that's making gains and, and uh, cashing in on all the information. So let's... let's and I do want to say really quick, a special thank you to everyone who joined. Thank you for being a part of uh, Market Mondays. Thank you for being an earner. And thank you for joining Red Panda. So um, it's going to be a good time. And I don't know, maybe we, you know, got to have a little options conversation and maybe... I don't know. Maybe next month we'll bump the call up to twice a week for the for next right. month to give a little special bonus. Got to over deliver, right? Yeah. So, you know, it's very rare that options and futures are discussed at the same time. At the same damn time. Oh, why old girl break the gang up? Oh my god! <laughs> but we not breaking up. That's what matter, right? <laughs> no matter for what sure. happened. <laughs> for sure. For sure. Oh okay. my okay. god! Oh okay. I'm over you all day though. Shout out to the so board. Let, <laughs> let's talk about um Apple. Let's we'll start with Apple. So the Department of Justice has a lawsuit against Apple. They filed the case against Apple. Yeah. And um this is something that when we spoke, we had Doha on actually, who works at the Department of Justice, and she she talked about antitrust laws. And at that time, she was talking about the, the government's case against Google um and a few other companies. But um the the United States government antitrust division as i said we had a guest on market mondays that spoke about that and uh apple now finds themselves in the middle of a what they're saying is actually a very a very strong case by the government and it will be interesting to see you know as far as they're talking about monopoly mm -hmm. they talked about the quality of videos being corrupted when you're sending it from apple to android done purposely they talked about um lack of innovation because there's no competition mm -hmm. So, you know, when you look at breaking apart a company, um, Apple has been, you know, the biggest company for a long time. So now the government is involved and Apple stock is down again and it, it hasn't done well in a while. So this obviously is not great news for Apple or the stock. So, yeah, let's let's, let's talk about this antitrust situation with the United States government and Apple. Um, so what they're saying is that they've been suppress suppressing the apps. I get that. Um, so, and then also too, the messaging restriction is a big thing. So I message, of course, the, the blue text versus green text. Like you said, the images don't come through clear 
on Android, they made a concession with FaceTime where a person with an iPhone can send a link out for anyone to join with an uh, iPhone. Maybe this case will probably take two or three years. They may have to do the same thing with iMessenger. But the bigger issue is if they try to break Apple up, and usually when these monopolies happen, it's because the consumers are being cheated. I don't hear many consumers complaining about these issues, right? So I think this case, even though it's going to be drawn out, Apple will have to pay a fine. I think they ultimately will win, but we have to look at the ma macro cycles of these things. Like when the market is down or the economy is tighter, these kind of lawsuits are more prevalent. Like notice when the market was booming, the economy was good. Apple was the darling stock. No one really cared. Now that the stock is down a little bit, we got NVIDIA to replace it. It's a cuter girlfriend on the block, new girl at school. Now it's like they want to move forward. And um, also, I think Fortnite had made a great issue that showed a little bit of weakness in Apple's kingdom. Um, and then digital wallet control. So the control over NFC payments through Apple Pay, um, it's, even though it's a smaller wallet that most people don't use, they have a few things stacked against them that makes them look like a competitor. So Tim Cook needs to do a better job. And he's done an incredible job, like grew to business to levels that even Steve Jobs wouldn't have been able to get it if he was alive. I think he needs to do a better job at massaging the government um, to have them lay off and then also give them a blueprint to make sure that they don't have an anti-competitive stance while keeping their moat. But the purpose of any business that anyone builds is to get so big that you get monopoly charges. So this is just a penalty of leadership. And also to push back on this, Android owns 50% of the market. It's not like if you don't buy an iPhone, you have no other competitor. When Microsoft went through this, they were really the only player in that PC market, software-wise. Um, you have a bunch of Android options, and I can argue for the last seven years, a lot of the phones on the Android side have been better. It's the ecosystem that I think that Android does not have. Does, does the ecosystem kind of give the DOJ the, the case to say that it is monopoly when you look at how it's laid out, right? You create the product, that's the iPhone. Mm -hmm. You create the, the operating system, iOS, and then you create the apps. And you decide what can go on, and then when you decide what can go on, you put the 30% tax. In that yes, case, but, right? Like, it, it, there, there's a that's case the way there, they've always done it. Yeah. I, and so when you look at it, you can understand why the case would be made. But I think even with that EU lawsuit, there's a, a bigger case inside of it too, right? When now we're starting to see these big, tech firms working together right so now it's the investigation of why is google the the, the search well they're paying 10 billion dollars mm -hmm. that's why they're the search that you're going to find right so like these type of scenarios where you're seeing the 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 large the, i guess the magnificent seven working together to get richer and get richer but working together it feels like it it yep. could be an monopoly. It, it just it just feels like it right yeah does yeah. the does i mean does this i mean because the, the the interesting thing is like can they break this up no, no. And, and I would argue if they do, it would give them two of the top 10 spots in the top 10 uh, publicly traded companies of all time. So even if you break up the app store, like AirPods alone is doing, I think, 29 billion in revenue. One product. What, what do you think the app store is doing? So if they make that open, which I think would be a disaster for quality control, but if they broke Apple into two different divisions... At some point, they're going to end up taking that lead back over again. I keep saying there isn't much innovation. Apple at scale is probably one of the biggest ones um, that have still innovated, even though they need to move faster. But like you say, it's harder to turn a cruise ship than it is a speedboat. But I think it would make them have two monopolies. I mean, mm. we have Apple and Google right now. They're doing business. We really have a duopoly. And they're going after Google. Um Hermes is going through the same thing with the Birkin bag. Like you have to have a preferred purchase in history before you can buy the Birkin. Okay, well, if you change that and you can just come in and buy the Birkin, guess what's going to happen? Well, let's just mark the price up to 50 grand minimum for one bag. Mm. So I understand what the DOJ is trying to do, but I think they're opposed to trying to break up Apple. They need to make every other company that is like top 50 in tech be a lot more innovative. Like what's happening yeah. with Snap, and if they do this to Apple, they're definitely coming after Meta. Meta, you, regardless of what I may have felt and changes they need to make in 2022, 
they're bigger than any other advertising agency combined all time. So if they come, if they come after Apple, I think it'll set a precedent to come after Meta, maybe then even to come after Tesla. And I don't know if they'll be able to win all those cases back to back. But Apple's always created the hardware and software. That's where the magic kind of comes in. And I'm not yeah, just saying that because I'm the best in the company, but it makes no sense to try and break apart these companies at this time when a lot more innovation is needed and consumers are not complaining. The only yeah. complaint I hear is that the phone doesn't change much. And for the premium model, it's like 1700, but you aren't hearing people complain about the ecosystem. Yeah. It, I, I think the, the time frame that it takes to get these type of cases to go through litigation, it gives them a window of saying, because I don't feel like the DOJ is saying break up the company. It's, feeling, it's saying like continue to do business, but have a better way about handling your business. And so the time that it's going to take to get this lawsuit to even to a point, there's any if there is a settlement, they have the mm -hmm. the leeway and the runway to say, all right, well, we can fix these things. It's like when they had the, the charger, right? And Europe was like, hey, you've got to change. We, this is unfair advantage. And they said, okay, before they, we get to a settlement, we'll just change the way we're operating when it comes to the charging stations in the docks. And so like it gives them that runway because they have the capital to innovate, right? They have the capital to pivot. It might not even come to a point where this thing gets dragged out. They'll just, just fix it before it, it comes to any type of judgment. Even on the messaging front, like hypothetically, let's say if they charge $2.99 a month for Android users to have the same access to Apple's ecosystem and the blue bubble, like they're also going to create revenue opportunities out of this. Mm -hmm. Like, even in the app store, let's say they charge 30%, they knock it down to 20. They're going to charge a 20% VIG and then find a way to have a subscription on top of that, which would drive in more revenue. Like you have to be careful what you're asking for. Um, and I get the protection of the other consumers, but they haven't done anything to harm them. Like when, when back in the day, when it was just Microsoft operating system and Linux. Okay. I get it then. But now, you can pick an Android, any kind of phone, the app store. And the, even with the app store, the way that the app store structure is clean. If not, you would have a whole bunch of porn apps and OnlyFans and scam apps available everywhere. Um, and then they'll come back and apologize a year later for messing up. Um, so I think they should just force American companies to be a lot more innovative opposed to just focusing on apple itself at a time when america needs more innovation and we don't have that many darling companies like it sucks that most of the time we are leading the show with apple tesla and bitcoin why there aren't that many other great companies in the united states of america shoddy i saw your post not too long before we have to find a way to spend six months in another country like we need more exceptional companies here not to tear down the ones that we have so who um all right so how would this affect the stock that's the question um i don't think it will have the greatest impact on the stock the stock is already sliding some anyway i think by summertime or fall they'll be okay um the iphone sales are the main reason why it's coming down but i think it's also a canary in the coal mine telling what's coming for the economy for me apple is the indicator of overall growth in our economy and since they've been falling, um, we haven't seen that many bright spots elsewhere outside of NVIDIA. I think they'll probably pull back a little bit more to maybe, mm, give me one second, um, maybe to 166.54, and then we should bounce up from there and we'll be good. But um, I think they'll recover by summertime, fall, they'll be great but they just need to find a way to be a lot more innovative when it comes to the phone and they haven't uh crossed that bridge yet but i think it'll happen eventually i'm okay. still pro apple still pro the stock as long as tim cook there he's like patty mahomes like he's gonna find a way to get it done he's gonna yeah. find a way I, as you were i was as you were talking uh previously i was thinking to myself the 30 percent fee to be in an app store all right, that a lot of people will feel that's an unfair, but I was, you're, you're being opening up to a large database. So I was thinking about what Google Play charges. And so their, their structure is it's 15% for the first million in revenue and then 30% after that. It's semantics. So that's, yeah. It's I mean, you, you still you make a million, they charge you to 30%. And the goal is yeah. to get to that point. Um, yeah. But at, at the start, if you're a startup and you're trying to gross a, a million in revenue, I mean, that's 
a 50 percent cut in the rate so yeah and it's a lot of political I, I, do you think some of this is timed around the elections too because they want to ban tiktok apple's going through this now meta went through it and they put him on capitol hill and grill zuckerberg he made adjustments but when the economy was booming it wasn't all this fanfare to try and take these companies down so i think some of this has to do with timing overall for what's going on in the election cycle as well um and, and the truth be told inflation is high gas prices are high food prices are high mortgages are high the american dream is dead why are you focusing on the tech companies like i wish they applied this pressure to boeing yeah he got fired but the same culture is there you're giving the contracts to boeing still right indeed app phone hasn't killed anybody App Store hasn't killed anybody. Yeah. Um, okay. So let's do this. Five personal finance tips for 2024. Um, number one, don't loan out any money. Uh, number two, um, I would save 40 to 50% of your money. We don't know what's coming. Something is going to come eventually. Uh, number three, you have to find a way to invest at least 25 percent of your income number four spend some time to invest capital to making yourself better in one area of your life whether it's investing whether it's ai or the stem i think that's really key and then um i think number five you have to find ways to invest money into businesses outside of publicly traded markets that are going to grow so whether that's finding a business to invest in that you believe in that you see has growth a friend, a project, an idea. Um, I know back in the day they had like product hunt where you can find things to invest in. But I think the biggest one um, for me is like finding places to deploy capital outside of the public markets and being being very tight on just giving out or handing out money um, when it's not earned and or deserved for sure. Like I did an interesting experiment this month. Well, like I didn't reply to any messages that were like non-revenue messages to 10 p.m. Um, just flat out didn't reply. Cool, like revenues up 1,300 percent month. Like we have to pour our time and energy and efforts into the right thing. And I think a lot of times as we grow and as we get established, because we have success, we want to make the climb easier for those of us behind us. But sometimes. You don't understand or appreciate the climb unless you went through it yourself. So as you grow, you still have to have that budget in mind that you're staying within um, and not, not just spend um, frivolously and just and, and over excessively in terms of helping. So, but w w what about you? I, I got a, like a quick question, right? Because we always talk about two tech, two index. And so mm -hmm. somebody actually asked me this um, this weekend. They were like, yeah, we always we talk about VTI, VOO as indexes right total market total s p 500 should people be looking at under indexes as well maybe growth index or international or i know you don't you talk about bonds all the time but should they be investigating yeah. and doing the research on those as well or to, should they stick to the total market in the s p join ianinvest.com and get the true <laughs> answer but um you can look at vug we went through this before vug is one that you can look at um that will give you some exposure. VGT is their technology arm. So if you want higher growth, international right now wouldn't touch. There's too much. Even Buffett said it in his letter, there are not 10 or 15 international companies that Berkshire will put their money into. Like there's a lot going on. The, the issue in Russia and the concert goers happen over like, we'll talk about what's going on in Haiti in a little bit. Um, there's some real risks out there once you are investing internationally. I, I still like Mercado Libre, but it's not that many that I can just say, hey, this is the index that I want to go in. Japan has been doing great, but even they they were doing great because they were still operating under a zero interest rate environment. Mm -hmm. China, I still haven't seen Jack Ma. So I would stay away. VUG, VTI, VGT, VOO, um, and you'll be A-OK. -okay. So and the next uh, time y'all pull up on a weekend too, I'm gonna be there. The where? I'm gonna be there. What? what yeah, what, whatever weekend. Okay. Retirement party, you know what I mean? People call me like, "Y'all see you guys in here? Where you at?" I'm like, "I'm at home." What you? Mean? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, shout, shout out to Amari Stoudemire. Yeah. 
<laughs> or his retirement. Uh, well, his jersey, jersey retirement. Jersey. Yeah. Um, jersey retirement. Yeah. Shout out to Kristen. Retirement. Kristen was actually the, uh, the one who uh, helped give me some credibility in the crypto world when she was working at Yahoo about the uh, call of Bitcoin going to 20,000. I know they love to say we never talked about crypto until this year, but Mike Novogratz was on and let the record reflect, you know, who was calling 28,000 to 20,000 when it was at 60. So, so let's, let's do this. Um, before our guest comes on, cause I, we got a lot of topics to talk about. Definitely want to talk about Nvidia and healthcare and then Chipotle as well. But, um, Let's give some educational tips as far as uh, books that people can can read to enhance their their knowledge base. Um, I talked about this in Stock Club this past weekend, but um, one is called Black Edge. Very fascinating book on how like the hedge fund hedge fund industry works. Um, number two, going back to the casino thing with Bruno Mars, a man for all markets. So um, the gentleman in the book is one who worked in the casino industry and then went over to the investing and brokerage industry. Um, and then the third book, I would say it's tough because I, I want to mention Money Master the Game, but I talked about this so much. But I probably would go through any books from Mark Douglas on trading psychology. Um, and the great part about that book is at every level, like if you're a beginning trader is going to help you if you're intermediary it's going to help you and then when you size up and get to a point where you're trading 40 50 contracts at a time it's going to help your life and the book feels new every time that you read it based on the level that you're at so those would be like my three recommendations for this quarter for people to read to help them uh, be a better trader and better investor in this market i'm with you i'm with you i think the mindset is the first thing is interesting because we just had our book club uh, yesterday shout out to everybody that pulled up to book club G was going on. Uh, it was a masterpiece. Um, right. And so I'll, I'll use, we gave out four books that uh, that we're interested in, in doing in this quarter. Uh, and it really has to do with investing and the mindset around investing. So Find Your Way um, by uh, Simon Sheck. Uh, okay. The Atomic, Atomic Habits by James Clear. And a great this is book. an all-time all classic. I mean, Blink by Ma Malcolm Gladwell is just an all-time classic. If you haven't read it, please, please add that to your, your, your reading digest add it to your library put it on audiobook blink is an incredible one and then i personally went back uh recently and uh read the color of money again i just think you always That's have dope. to yeah just just to sometimes as we're navigating through this you want to make sure that you have a, a historical landscape of how we got to this point uh because you mm -hmm. meet people every day that are just at different levels of their financial journey um, from the trauma um, into the travel mode. We always talk about survival mode, the travel mode. So having that mindset, but understanding from a historical standpoint, well, why we got here, how we got here, I think is important. So those are like four right now that definitely we're going to be talking about. Um, so you should add it to your list as well. All right. Now, without further ado, we have a very legendary and important guest for an important conversation that we're going to bring up. So let's bring yes. to the stage brother y clef john what's going on my brother what up my families how y'all doing we're doing glory good, brother. how, are how you doing? feeling i'm good you know um trying times for haiti again but um we up though we up so y clef needs no introduction um but i'll give him one you know one of the greatest when you when you talk about music the fuji's his solo career producer um mm -hmm. but outside of what he's done musically and outside of the entrepreneur ship um a humanitarian mm -hmm. and a great patriot for his country of haiti and um we actually were together a few weeks ago at, at morehouse so when this whole situation in haiti was unraveling i wanted to cover it but i wanted to cover it from a different perspective as opposed to us just speaking about it i wanted to actually talk to somebody that was always on the ground somebody that you know is is very knowledgeable in the situation and i think it's important for our audience which is mostly, you know, black Americans um, to understand the plight of Haitians and why it's important for the diaspora mm -hmm. of black people all over the world. Haiti is a very important country when you look at the history. And I feel like, um, you know, the the hundreds of thousands of people that'll, that'll hear this, it, it could be beneficial in rallying support. The first, the first step is awareness. Mm -hmm. If you're not aware of any, if you're not fully aware then it's hard to have a full support, right? And um, so 
I reached out to his team and they was very gracious and was like, when you want to do it, let's 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 do it. It's like, you know, he he definitely wants to make time for us. So first and foremost, thank you. Thank you thank for you. um coming on, my brother. I appreciate it. Thank you so much, man. I I, I beyond appreciate it. Shout out to everybody that's listening. Um, you know, this is my audience. This this who created the Fuji's, honestly. You know, this is where it started for us from the freaking uh nappy heads, your Mona Lisa. Can I get to the <laughs> to the carnival to the score so thank you it's, it's an honor you know and as y'all can hear you know in my music whether if it's like from a little wayne to shakira hips don't lie you know i, I always bring y'all like that 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 gumbo you know that that thing that because for me it was always important that we we bridge it and i think musically is amazing but i think historically today is going to also be amazing once we, yeah, I, we I think there's there's only one piece of the bio that we left out and that was a tech innovator and a fanatic when, when it comes to everything in the world of technology. Um, that's something that I actually learned when we, we had dialogue at Morehouse. And I was, you would like talk to me about companies and AI. And I'm like, you're like, that's what I, my first passion was. So I want to just add that to the bio as well. And so that's funny you say that. So, you know, when you come from Haiti, you come to America. There's three things on the list. Doctor, lawyer, engineer. That's it. Mm. Um, so you had to pick one. So um, I'm actually a doctor of music. I always forget that um, I have a doctrine in music and I'm also uh, a, an engineer. Um, so I would say like I started off before I knew it was called coding right <laughs> backwards and um, to get to the level um, where I got to today. So definitely um, I always tell people, you know, first and foremost, you know, I'm I'm a, I always just. I always try to say the artistry of what we do is a God given gift, but in coming to America, I had to have two or three or four plans. You know what I'm saying? So when they be like, yo, them Western, what was it in living color when they used to make fun of the Caribbean people? Be the like, tree yo, jobs. Not, yo, they not lying, bro, about that. That's so true. <laughs> <laughs> I know a thing or two about it. <laughs> <laughs> all yeah. right. So the first, all right, I want to start here. So, um, We've been watching the news and we have been uh, seeing that there's an uprising that's happening in Haiti. Right. And how the news, how the news had painted it was that it was uh, um, gangs have taken over the streets of Haiti. They've exiled the president. Um, the president can't come back to the country and he's kicked out and it's just lawlessness in the streets. And that's that's all I, that's all I saw. But when I saw you speak on CNN and you kind of gave a different perspective. You gave a more like overview that made a lot of sense. So I think the first thing that I would like is for you just to explain to the audience from your, from your vantage point, what exactly is currently going on in Haiti and um, where are we now today? Okay, definitely. So I would say the first thing with the audience is there is a documentary called the ghost of Cite Soleil that we did in 2005 in this documentary it connects the connections with the gangs and the politicians like it puts it together and i think if y'all haven't gotten a chance definitely look at that it's called the ghost of cite soleil it's a very important documentary because it'll it'll help you understand so for example i was watching the bar marley one love and y'all saw how they shot at Bar Marley. If y'all never got a chance, definitely check this, um, check that movie out, right? Because there's a connection here. So what Bar Marley was fighting for was so the parties can get together versus being divided, they could they could be more unified. So in this process, um, they shot at Bar Marley and he ended up going to England, later coming back playing a One Love concert. But if y'all see the magnitude of how Kingston, Jamaica was, fire, bodies on the floor, all kind of stuff, it reminds me sort of like what's going on in Haiti right now. So it, it just to understand and put Haiti in perspective, why should we care? So I think like one of the things like when I was in black history in America, one of the, 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 the things that I wish that they had mentioned you know, because my uncle, one of them being a, like a scholar at a very early age, you know, one of the things they told me about was, you know, the Battle of Savannah, 1779, the American Revolution. 
and how the Haitians played a role within that revolution. So I, I was like, there's no way you're going to teach me about uh, American history or African American history and you don't put that in there. So for me, I want y'all to understand that we way more connected than we are um, divided. And saying that, where we are today, we're in a position where y'all saw that they murdered the Haitian president. So mm -hmm. think about this. Three years ago, they murdered this dude. Now, think about the resources that we have if we wanted to track this down. The reason why I say this, here's something that you might not know. One of the biggest embassies, U.S. embassies, period, perhaps one of the biggest in the world, is in Haiti. So we have literally one of the biggest um, embassies. So based off of that, I think, you know, there's not an intelligence that we want to find out that we can't find out. So in this process to say they killed the Haitian government, we three years in and it's still moving very slow. So in this process, hails a prime minister called Ariel Henry. Now, when this dude take power, the thing was he was supposed to do elections in six months. I guess the power was so sweet for him that he daggled his arms. And in this process, 300,000 people are displaced. Over like, think of like over 3,000 deaths in like a year. It's almost like you in a war inside of a war. So what happened was the gangs was like, hold up. This is like really messed up right now. What if we turn our arms towards the people that uh, that actually gave us the guns, right? So this is one narrative, and this is very important. And again, I'm not preaching violence, but it's important to understand that these guns didn't just appear out of nowhere. Somebody had to give these boys these very expensive guns. So in this process, they said, okay, we're no longer gang members. We're going to call ourselves men of arms now. We're revolutionaries and we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to fight for our country. So in this process, Ariel Henry leaves the country to go to Kenya. And again, this is something else that I'm not for, to get Kenyan forces to come back to Haiti to fight. Of course, this would be backed up by, I think, a $200 million budget. And again, per year. So I'm like, but hold up, this makes no sense because why don't that money go towards training the police force in Haiti and stealing that and focus on putting Haiti's army back in place? Being that in the Caribbean, we're still like the biggest people with 11 million people. Um, so when he goes to, to Kenya, this is when the revolution rises on different levels, right? And I use the word revolution um, as a word in saying that everybody decided their version of what the revolution was going to be. So the guys who's no longer call themselves gangs, they're like, yo, we are men and we're going to revolutionize to be free. Then you got different people saying we're going to revolutionize to topple the system, right? In this process, total anarchy, right? And you also have now in Jamaica, which is a small group called Caracom, of eight people that is supposed to decide the transition of the Haitian government moving forward, and they still cannot decide that. So where we are today, we're in a brink where um, the planes can't land in Haiti. So that means aid can't come into Haiti. We're in a point where now you can't tell the difference between the cops and the robbers, right? Because everything now is infused into forms in the, of infiltration. So uh, it's total, and in, in this anarchy, um, what we notice is that the solution for this has to be in the hands of Haitian people. And the reason why I say this is because we've seen that through policy, um, it has failed Haiti. Like these policies that are put in place have failed Haiti. I don't think that it was smart for Haiti's army to be dismantled. I think you could have pulled parts of institution. I think that when people hear of, uh, of, of, of army, I mean, the first thing that I think about is a tool of discipline where 
kids can go get education, learn a tool, get them out of their rural areas and give them a different environment. So a lot of that is lost. So where are we at today? We are waiting for the eight member council which is called, um, which is being uh, worked around by uh, CARICOM, which is in the Caribbean. So this is another word for y'all. People be like, yo, Clef, but what's CARICOM? I mean, think of CARICOM like all of the leaders of the Caribbean that get together and they help shape decisions, you know what I mean? Um, so in this process, um, the people on the ground in Haiti do not agree with this eight member council that's being set up. They feel that the console and that idea should come from the actual Haitian people. So in saying that, you have a constant movement on the ground now where, you know, these uh, the, the the bad people, let's just call them that because the good people wouldn't do that. The bad forces are still forms of kidnap, still forms of rape, still forms of pillaring the innocent. Um, so we're at that pattern right now, which is a very uh, tricky pattern, and it's important that we get past it. That's where we at. Clef, that that was a uh, very informative. Um, few few questions. Um, when when you think about the leadership part, that was interesting. You said that it was from an outside source, right, coming from a J Jamaican conglomerate. Um, obviously, trying to get the the Kenyan uh, military involved majority of what you're speaking of this uprising is happening in port prince the largest city the capital city right when you're talking about the airport is closed we're talking about prisoners being freed we're talking about gangs united are there other regions inside of the country that we could that leadership can be formed from and create i guess that new form of leadership or is port of prince the the, the place where it has to come from okay this is a, a very great question so to answer your question now I, I try to become president. I ran for president when I when I did, like in 2012. It's for this exact reason you just said. I was like, I remember like when Kingston was totally messed up. And the idea was like, you know, let's focus on Montego Bay, Ocho Rios, different parts of the island. Let's start the come back to Jamaica campaign. You know, let's figure out a duty-free zone. Let's figure out tax incentives to start to make people focus on the other side of the island. So to your point, I always say that Haiti's problem is a PR problem because people look at Port-au-Prince as in the total uh, country. But what we're going through right now, in order for the northern part and different part places, like uh, I'll give you some 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 cool names, Oka. There's another place called Jacmel. That's where the surfers be going and they don't tell too many people. So like, you know, mad people don't show up. Um, there's another place called Jeremy, very green. So in order for these places to still develop, right, you still have a capital where the majority of the businesses, so people come to the capital to, to make business. So in order to move forward, we would have to start to create bigger industries outside of the capital, right? So we start to focus on the North, right? Um, one of Haiti's greatest assets is the human capital and the soil, right? Haiti was known for being like the lead export of sugar at one time. Um, again, I always say if it ain't broken, don't fix it, right? This soil is one of the biggest assets that Haiti possessed. So to your point, it would have to start, the reshape of the thinking has to start with the Haitian constitution itself, right? So the constitution, the Haitian constitution, I feel needs to be amended. Uh, amend, amended so what you've just said can become a reality. And which parts of the constitution should be amended? One of the parts is, I say that the future of Haiti is in the diaspora, not in Haiti. The future of Haiti is here. And the, the, the Haitians that live up here, why I say that is because half of when you look at the treasure in Haiti, the amount of money that's there. I'm um, not sure if y'all know, but the diaspora, we contribute billions of dollars a year to Haiti just from the transfers alone. So we should have a say on who the president is, 
who the senator is, who the deputy is. We from here should have a say in a vote because we are Haiti's economical force. Because now if we could start to have a say in a vote, we can start to shape other parts of Haiti, as in the diaspora, right? Focus on the anti-corruption law. Make it easy for people here that want to go back to their island and start export, that want to invest in the natural resources in the country from the mining on down, give them an opportunity. So I think that in order to put the diaspora in these positions of power, we're going to have to focus on one of the number one things is uh, like uh, um, amending the Constitution so that it can give us more rights. Um, quick question for you. Um, how long do you think this coup or like civil war lasts? And who do you think is truly behind this? Because I don't believe in coincidences. Uh, Haiti's been under attack for a couple of centuries. Um, you don't have to go down a the conspiracy theory aisle, but who do you think is behind this coordinated attack? I definitely won't go down conspiracy theory. I'll just bring just pure facts, right? So if you've seen uh, the Marines have occupied Haiti, I think it was 1914. You know, we could keep going with the, the history. Um, then we had the dictator, right? We had uh, Papa Doc, right? And, and, and we could see that this pattern of Haiti all the way to today is Haiti has been failed in policy making through corruption of the politicians that's constantly influenced right by outside forces and what that means is they're not in the level of negotiating they're always on the level of greed so they think of greed before the actual people right so again i always say this and i say this strongly right if if i need help in my house <laughs> i have to be able to fix my house and i have to weave out certain players and the thing is i feel that the people of haiti through the diaspora through us have to get stronger and making certain decisions on who the actors are going to be moving forward sort of like the twilight zone it's a constant episode where you know we know something weird is going to happen at the very end and this has been the pattern of haiti and understand this the legislation piece is the most important. I think that as we move towards Haiti, we have to get to the center. And what I mean by that, everything for Haiti thus far have been a left movement, like a super left movement, like mm -hmm. in the House of Representatives, I don't know too many Republicans that ever talk about Haiti. So I think that we have to get in the center because the policies are still being shaped and parts of it out of Washington, D.C., right? So I look at us within the United States, and I say that within North America, I feel that we can do much more by looking at Congress and looking at who's the ambassadors of Haiti? What are these laws, right? So you have like Aligarh families that leave Haiti and go to Washington, D.C., and they are the ones that help shape policies. So how do we start participating in that? So again, I think that it's a contribution of us here in the States. I think it's a contribution of, you know, powers that have a lot of money um, want to see Haiti in this position. Why? A few things. I think that if we get our act together, one of the things that we can focus on is our natural resources, right? So despite what they told you about Haiti, I, I sent I sent y'all two articles. I think one is uh, the New York Times. They'll give you a, a perspective of where we are. Um, not that I always believe what's in the New York Times, but this one is actually accurate. And um and then the second one was a Forbes article, which is interesting to show you amongst all the this, this, this disaster, how much natural resources um, that we have. So these are some of the things that we do have. And again, um, Haiti, high elevated land. We do have a, a constant, you know, traffic of, of, of constant 
drugs moving around. It's like the babysitting capital of cocaine right now um, in the Caribbean. So these are some of the things that we have to fight. So, um, yes, you, you mentioned the New York Times article. So I want to reference it because obviously anybody knows that Earn Your Leisure is a financial platform, right? So the history of, of Haiti is, is extremely interesting when it comes to finances, right? So I want to just kind of go down a timeline. So uh, 1791, Haiti becomes the first country and in, in only country actually in world history to ever uh, successfully be formed from a slave revolt, right? They, they beat the, the French, overthrew yeah. the, the French um, slaves, slave revolt, and became an independent uh, nation. Now, a lot of people were not aware that as a result of them gaining independence, they were forced to pay France reparations from my understanding napoleon they put the ships at the shore and they was really kind of at you know is one of these situations where they, they they couldn't really go about not having to strike that deal so for their independence they struck that deal as far as the reparations so the reparations lasted for generations um and they said billions billions of dollars were actually drained out of the asian economy and pumped into france Yep. which actually helped build the Eiffel Tower. This is part of the New York Times article. Uh, and then they actually talk about Wall Street benefiting from Haiti as well. As far as you had mentioned that the occupation, um, one of the companies that uh, they said is actually, you know, one of the drum beats and, and started as a result of that uh, became Citigroup. Obviously, Fortune 500 company, one of the biggest companies in the world, right? And then years later, um president one of the president actually had started a call for reparations from france and he was ousted as a result and then you talk about like you said um you know politicians being murdered and unstable government so when you when you see statistics of like you know it's 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 similar as far as okay we talk about the wealth gap in america right and we say, okay, well, black people only own 1% of the wealth. Well, there's there's a historical reason why that's happening. It's not just that people are lazy and that they're just incompetent. You had the Freeman Bank, you had redlining, you had Jim Crow. So there's yeah. hundreds of years that have got us to this point. The same with Haiti, you look at Haiti, you say, okay, well, Haiti's the poorest country in this hemisphere and they're, they're um, very uh, low on the economic spectrum. Well, that's for a reason, right? You, you, you have to when you had to pay reparations to one of the most powerful countries in the world for 150 years and your natural resources were taken from you and you was occupied. And well, now you can kind of see why there's such level of instability in the country. So I wanted to just kind of give that historical timeline and I'll let you talk about it as, as well, Clef, because I think it's important for people to understand the history. Cause a lot of times, like I said, the media just portrays now, but they never talk about how and why we actually got to this point. Well, yeah, and and, uh, and again, um, this this is why I pointed towards the New York Times article. But let's break it down in a nutshell. This first black republic basically shut down Napoleon, which is the greatest army at the time of the world. Think of it like Napoleon was his own like Roman Empire if that makes sense. And in this process, I call it the extortion fee, right? Because this guy's so powerful, like, yo, y'all don't want me to come back. We're going to keep these boats here. Y'all going to keep paying me. And something interesting happened, right? So a leader rose years later, right? A leader rises and he goes, um, okay, I want France to start to pay reparation. And in this process, the leader gets out. Like, no, that ain't gonna happen. But what I want us to do is we gotta look at how do we move forward, right? And a lot of people be like, yo, man, you're so optimistic, man. Like, how can you stay like that, right? So for me, I would say one of the things that keep me optimistic is having a chance to to fly to South Africa and spending some time with the, the late, great Nelson Mandela. Hmm. 
and um having those one-on-ones with him and you know picking his brain um right and then one of the things he said was like you know once we stop the dream stop and i feel that in the position that we're in today this exchange of information that we're doing right now is part of where the future of haiti is going to head into right because to get haiti out of what it's in right now it's no difference than when i was doing the 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 uh the TIAA thing, and we was talking about 54% of black and browns don't have a retirement plan, right? Mm-hmm. They don't know where they're going to land, right? So we find this these informations subject to what country you're in and different, but different actors, but uh, stories are always similar, right? So as we move forward, the focus has to be how do we get back to economical freedom? And what I've learned in with Nelson Mandela as he's speaking, to get back to economical freedom has to be a unification. There can't be a unification with black Americans and Haitians, which I don't even use the words, I just call all of us Africans, FYI. But I use these words to tell you they can't be a connection until there's a real connection with Africa, right? Because Africa is us and it's the next superpower where everything is going. So now you have these kids that are trading very fast. As y'all can see, Nigeria is just up and in, up and in, um, in, 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 the, in the stock market, if you follow the different things that's going in, going on, this, with my Marcus Garvey eyes, I've just been looking at it and be, been saying, okay, the way out of this is going to be, what is the trade for trade? What is gonna make people feel that Haitians are valuable, like we valuable, like we bring something to the world stage? Right, uh, we black Americans, we're valuable as a whole. We bring something to the world stage. And I think that that's gonna take that unification of all of us. And in saying that, to get to economical freedom, we have to be in control of our natural resources. Again, this is where it lies. Our natural resources will allow us to be able to create trade for trade and focus on exporting and also growing in our own country so that we don't have to rely on rice stock and then different things right focus with companies that are willing to bring machineries into these countries uh, look at the banking structure working on that you know revolutionizing that to to how do we move into the digital world of the 21st century so these are some of the things that uh that we're looking at um as a small group the new diaspora which is a small collective that i'm putting together yeah i'm, I'm glad you, you stopped right there because that's where i was wanting to go next was that that pathway forward right that pathway to progress right so what does that look like i know in 2012 like you said you, you ran for president so you obviously had a vision uh, to look forward for the country obviously this is this is more than just a passion this is a life for you so in today's age, what is the pathway forward? How does the diaspora help? How does it support? Even with banking, right? There were there's reports that you know people can't cash their checks, so nobody is able to have money right now. So, how do we add technology into this? How do we reform banking? What is the the pathway forward uh, as you see it? I always talk about is you know. <clears throat> mobile banking on a different level right um i know that you know parts of the world bank you know doesn't agree right with what i'm about to say right but what's new right so 
So we talk about digitizing, right? And we talk about like currency, right? Think of we're in a situation right now where people can't really use even money, right? It doesn't matter. The money can't get to them, right? But if we had a digitized system, right? There's ways that even through this disaster of what's going in, right? They could be currency that's counted for money until the money come. Y'all with me? Yep. Yeah. So in saying that, the way to move forward when we're looking at Haiti, one of the things that I was looking at, and this is a word that I'm going to use, this word is called carbon credits. Now, carbon credits is like an environmental fund. Right? When I ran for president, I felt that because of how we fell through a disaster through the environment. So I felt that I can rebuild the country, just give you an example, through these carbon credit instruments, right? Which they don't even talk about. But guess what? If I'm going to do it like that, there's going to be a clash with corporate interests, right? Because mm -hmm. corporate interests is like F that. We want to come in, build the infrastructure. We want to make the money. Mark Clef, you're in our way. And I feel that as we move towards the future, we have to have leaders that understands a middle ground. And I feel the middle ground is negotiating for the interests of the people. And that's what we're going to need moving forward. Who is going to negotiate for the interests of the people for the banking system? who is going to negotiate trade moving forward, greater possibilities, who's going to negotiate infrastructure with healthcare um, mm -hmm. in situations like that. Um, and then we speak of education. When we speak of education, to me, in third world countries and in third world islands, so I'm, I, let me speak to you as someone who ate dirt from the floor, no cap. I clef ate dirt, like mud pie dirt from the floor. When I, I have transportation to go to school. At times, I would get on the donkey, or my brother would get on the donkey, and then one of us would walk. We didn't have the idea of water. I had to go to. We had to go to the well, where everybody had to bring their buckets and dug out water. The idea of bathroom, we don't know what that meant. We had to just use what was called a ravine, which is a hole that's planted like in, in, the, in the middle of like where you would consider a forest area. So I speak to you firsthand. As I speak to you firsthand, it's this just hit me and I'm gonna tell y'all this. So I'm in the village. I'm barely like six years old. I remember this clear. And a truck pulls up. I've never seen a truck before in my life. And this truck pulls up. And a white man get out the truck. And I'm using this terminology, white man, because that's what it was then. I've never seen a white man before. Long hair. The truck looks like a UFO to me. He goes in the back of the truck and he, he's getting these bags of rice to bring towards my grandmother. We both standing there. And little while Clef looks at his grandmother and he says, who is this? And my grandmother says, that's Jesus Christ. Right. So now, so now Jesus comes and Jesus brings me the rice. And when Jesus is leaving, I tell my grandma, why did he just bring us rice? Why didn't he bring us the fertilizers? Why didn't he bring us the seeds? Why didn't he bring us the machineries? Because if he really wanted to help us, past him leaving, he would leave the supplies for us. Mm. So if we want Haiti to be better moving forward in the sense of education, it can't be fake education, right? If the child is already 16 years old, you can't have, and he, he hasn't read a book yet, what kind of education are you gonna give him, right? Then he, you turn around 
and you see like he's real good with his hands. He could take a car apart and put it together. So now you have to evaluate the education. So his version of education just becomes the trade school because that's how he gets successful. Right. So we have to evaluate when we say education, what kind of education are we studying the different tribes that are in Haiti? Right. When we catch the kids very, very early. Yes. We, we teach them language. We teach them history. We teach them, but you have also an environment that's like 20 something that is just wandering right now. And I think that this can be a new form of education. Right. Um, in America. Even if you're not the doctor, you could still be the nurse. Even if you're not the nurse, you could still be handling the equipment for the nurse until you become a nurse. So I think like we have to evaluate what kind of education we bring into these third world countries and islands. Um, how do we build a new diaspora while we have to face World Bank, World Bank global racism, um, all these geopolitical threats. Cause it seems like whenever we make any advancements, the rules change or attacks happen. Um, we're seeing Haiti go through it now. Um, even Rashad, you saying that that finance, the Eiffel tower, that's crazy to me. I, I didn't know that. Um, but how do we make change without becoming targets for the system? Well, the that's way that we, that's a good point. The way that we make change, I keep saying that we have to be on the world stage and in order to do that we have to have trade for trade we have to focus on our natural resources our economies like let's start to build things that we know that that the rest of the world is going to need right so that we could become a player of the world and i think that this conversation that we're having now is bigger than a conversation so with the new diaspora um we have judges, we have lawyers, right? We have people who want to shape policies and want to see it different, right? We have people in um, the World Bank that even if they don't talk, like they want, people want to, there's, there's still the groups of people that want to see the difference. How do you face to not be a target towards anyone? There have to be a need, right? Because if it's not a need, all you're going to do is be a casualty of war. And I think that Haiti has so much to offer the rest of the world. And I think that focusing on the policies, focusing on the industry, building the new diaspora as a force of policy, uh, investment force for ec uh, uh, economic force um, will give us leverage to be able to speak uh, one on one um, on the world stage moving forward. So um, before I, before I let you go, I want to um I want to actually give you an opportunity to kind of switch gears a little bit because obviously you have a lot of responsibilities and you know it, it's it's a lot for one man to actually you know hold so much on his shoulders but i want to talk about some other aspects of life that i know you're passionate about like we saw you i think you was in davos if i, I don't think we got a chance to connect in davos but i believe you was in davos so i know Troy said you you're heavily tapped in on on the technology side so mm -hmm. as far as you somebody that's reinventing himself time and time again um, what technology are you most excited about and what technology are you most, uh, I don't want to use the word fearful, but what, what most, what technology concerns you the most? Cause there's a lot of, there's a lot of concern out there. So what excites you and what concerns you? Okay. I think that I probably can, can speak. I think I can speak as a, a representative of, a, of Google mind, right? Um, so let's, let's start off with what the audience fear. Um, what the audience fear is the prospect of AI in the sense of being, uh, un uncontrollable, right? So I'll give you an example, like in my world, right? Say like an AI can actually create hips don't lie it can create mm -hmm. one one it can create the score but the key is the coding and that data and the information comes from humans right so i think that technology to a point has made us kind of lazy 
where we don't want to use our minds, right? Because think of like us as Asiatic, right? Still, if you go back to the pyramid um, and I could keep going on different inventions, right? Where the original iPhone is you looking at the stars and being able to, <laughs> to decipher what's going to happen. So I say to you that man meets machine, machine will never be smarter than the innovator. So this is very important for you to understand that. But I just feel like if we don't step up our game, if we don't start to think advanced, if we don't start to think past what's here, then we're going to end up in an area where a lot of people are going to lose jobs, which you've seen happening now. Right. So if if my little niece is five or six years old, I got her in a coding program right now. Right. Mm. You can see how the world is changing and what that language is going to be. But I always say the fear of the AI is the lack of creativity and invention because it could never be smarter than you within the human. If we did not exist, then thus information cannot be pulled and put into coding form. So to me, um, that's something that I see firsthand and everything going on. Um, what I'm excited about is the prospect of us. The prospect of us, and when you look at the data that's being produced out there, just take Netflix, for example, like half of the, the content is coming from Africa. Just give you an example, um, mm -hmm. like half of the content. <clears throat> now, if we was to analytically break that piece of data down, we are talking about billions of dollars, right? When we look at companies like Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and we could keep going, I'm excited about the prospect of what's next, meaning what's the next invention? I feel like that has to come from us. The reason why I say that is because all of the data banks on one thing, cultural relevancy. That's the biggest currency the content of cultural re relevancy. So I would like to see a great awakening within our communities. And we start to set up new platforms where versus people just constantly giving the data away, they start to understand the importance of data mining and platforms that can set up to create that and help people build their data and in the process start to make money themselves in, in terms of um, obviously you're a doctor of music and a legend when you're talking about awakening i wonder do do people in in that field look to you um as somebody's inspiration for information right like when we go to a lot of these places we're in davos we're at summits we see you we see will i am we, we hear about chameleon Air. are there others um that are out there that are trying to figure out how to adapt to the way technology is headed, especially when it comes to artificial intelligence, or are people just kind of ignoring it from your perspective? I think that it's up to us to bring it to them, right? So, I mean, I've, to me and Will, I am, we, sp we speak in depth. That's like my little brother. But it's almost like when I'm looking at what's going on in Davos, I'm like, man, how do we work on something and bringing it to this side of the world, right? Because I think okay. that um guess what they can't get to davos like us they're not as fortunate enough they're not invited right so but we have so much information and we come back right so i remember back in the days man when i was a young man you know before i had this long beard i remember <laughs> like, like and then the right we there was like freak nick there was how can i be down there was all of these you know, booty conventions, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, you know, after after. we are like college kids, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, y'all already know. Um, and uh, and I call them the booty conventions because everyone would be creeping to each other's dorms. Y'all don't have to lie about it. We all know. <laughs> it, right? So so in this process, right, let's step it up, like do a version of that. Now it's no longer that it's our version of what a Davos would be here, 
with the technology, like bringing in um, the will I am's, the Y clubs, the y'all, the, all of us together. Like, why why can't we set up something here? I think it would be tasteful. It would be interesting, and it would again give the youth here, uh, the women and men here who have this kind of knowledge, but who lacks that knowledge that we get there and start our own version of what that would be here. Um, I'm excited about that prospect and seeing how we all could team up on that. Uh, that That is very, uh, what's the phrase? What do they say? Information is power. They can't get over there. So there's things that we see that we could bring back on this side. Mm -hmm. On the music side, uh, do you feel that the music industry is dying and Fuji Soul with 27 million albums? Like, what's the blueprint for a successful group um, and branding and marketing in the music business today? So, so here's the secret. The secret is in the publishing. It's in the catalog. It's in what you write and making sure that you own that, right? So... This is what I always tell the youth, right? This is the power. So I tell people, I got in the music business because I didn't want to go to college and I needed to have a profession, even though I still went to college. Now, the profession is songwriting. It's in the composition. So what that means is I was telling somebody that, uh, when we when we did killing me softly killing me softly i made somebody else millions and millions of dollars right mm -hmm. that's when i understood hola hola i just i mean even though we get money while we performing but somebody's getting money and they're not performing they chilling they probably just eating popcorn right now watching a movie i said that's the side that we need to be on the publishing side. So in that, when you hear a song like DJ Khaled, Wild Thoughts, boom, 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 right? Mm -hmm. Now that's a sample from my song, Maria Maria, that I own the catalog, right? So when we watch the Super Bowl, and now I'm eating the popcorn, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. I'm on the other side of the fence. So what I try to urge the youth is, yeah, you get money, but you got to see past the hype and make sure that you're creating something that, right? Because think about it. We're, we're um, 30 years in now. So I came out in 1993. How many artists that came up from my era that y'all could FaceTime right now and if I was to take you around my compound, it would take me two hours. I think <laughs> I had to do a rap flex real quick, right? But <laughs> the reason why I did this rap flex real quick was to say, as funny as it sounds, maybe two or three, right? Because the power, okay. right? The power has to be in a composition. So I always tell the youth, Make sure that you own your publishing. Make sure that you have in control of what you're writing. Because later, if you decide to sell a piece of it, that's your intellectual property. That's your real estate. So that's always the, as far as like the music, me and my daughter have an amazing relationship. She's 19 and we go back and forth. The world do not lack amazing music. I think that generations change and as generations change, because my daughter's 19, she know where to get the Biggie, where to get the Kendrick. She knows when it, she want to go. She's like, I'm going ratchet right now for the next hour. Don't talk to me. I'm in the gym. Right. So, again, I think collectively the music is constantly there. What it is, is it's so much data now that, you know, what I'm saying if you're not on the field or know what's going on, man, by the time. You get through it. It's like you're like, okay, how many babies is there? You know, how many? <laughs> like, but think about it though. Back in the days, we had the same thing. Like, yo, MC this, MC that, so and so this, yeah. so and so. That. But I feel that music is at a very exciting time. The reason why I say that is because the surge of Africa and how now Afro beats is a household form of music, and pigeon English has become a regular language in my household. 
for my daughter, right? So again, I think that doing that, um, we're, we're, we're at a level now where I think that music is becoming, we was fighting for music to be global, but I think that we're at the level now is global. You can hand and pick what you want. Well, Clef, my brother, I want to, I want to thank you. And, uh, well, first you brought up a thing about Davos and, um, we actually, so I don't know if you're familiar with Invest Fest, but that's our creation. So we, we've started a, a festival, financial festival. It's the fourth year. And last year we had 20,000 people. We've had people like Robert Smith and Tyler Perry, Rich Paul, Maverick Carter. And this year we got a heavy AI focus. And that's actually the idea, right? Of to, like you said, everybody can't get to Davos. Everybody can't get to these different things that we're fortunate enough to be on. So we, we wanted to do something that was culturally relevant, right? And still put swag on it, but have a place where people can not only be educated, but also network. So I say that to say, you mentioned it. So if you, if, if you can make it this year, I definitely want to extend an invite to you. If, if you um, are around at the end of the summer, we'll give you the information, but um, you teed it up. So I had, I had to, <laughs> I had to, I had to. Yeah. All right. So that that sounds amazing. If I could get the date sooner than later, um, I look I, I beyond look forward to being there with y'all. So grateful for that. You already started it. And um, again, I, information is power and I'm glad you all doing that. And um, I look forward to uh, with a lot of things that I've been working with on Davos. So by the end of this summer, I definitely will be in a position to share some more stuff um, and uh some stuff that that y'all gonna it's gonna blow that that uh <laughs> that sum it up man i'm on some stuff so yeah so count on me on that i would say the last thing i'm gonna say is musically um for all the fans that's been waiting for new music the, the fuji's definitely going back on tour as a uh, fuji, for that um, got the score um, up we started last year it's it's definitely going to be amazing so now the fuji's is like freaking like the young cool in the gang bro like so we could pick up the bag and just be like all right let's go to africa let's go to so that's amazing to have a band like that and a brand like yep. that 30 years later you know like last year unannounced and we're like selling stadiums and people still trying to figure out how are they able to do that and i always say when you build a movement then music is gonna work you know what i'm saying the second thing is me and little wayne are both libras and we have a special music connection. It started with the record Sweetest Girl. And after I did the record Sweetest Girl, which is a whole reinvention for me, you know what I'm saying? Because you got people, the kids know Sweetest Girl before they know a Fuji record. So you got these different inventions. And Sweetest Girl is important because that was the digital era coming in. So things was being switched from like records now to the digital era. After that, I got into politics two years ago me and Lil Wayne connected at the Essence Festival. And that's my brother. And we've been working on, I think like one of the greatest collabos, full album group oh, music man. that's gonna come. Wow. And it's it's titled Gumbo. And then so look out for that. That's gonna be crazy. And the last thing I would say this year is my full length reggae album for all okay. of my ganja smokers you already know <laughs> light in here light in here light in here lighter so this one is called one night in kingston and y'all gonna love it it's laid back it's the vibes definitely so very excited at, of the prospect of uh of music too so we're gonna have fun this year one last question speaking of music who you got and it's uh Kendra versus drake battle <laughs> um i have yet to see i'm a big fan of both right and i think that the versatility of both men are insane you know what i'm saying to you i have yet to see but i gotta tell you it's like uh, the way that when people ask me about that i'd be like yo y'all seen gemini it's like twin versus twin because they both can sing they can rhyme, they could go off topic, they could go on topic. Um, so I, I think is is we have yet to see. It's gonna be amazing though. I like I like it when it stays like that and don't yeah. go nowhere else. You know what I'm saying to you? So yeah, yeah. let's keep it in the music. Yeah, who you got? I I got I, I got I got J. Cole. You said you said Drake versus Kendrick, but you forgot to say oh, J. Yeah, Cole. Yeah, yeah when, when J. Cole, it's over with J. Cole, yeah, that's my that's my pick in the fight. Okay, I, okay. I, you know what I'm saying. I, 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 like, I, as an MC, I love man. I think they three are just 
crazy because you know battle rapping it depends right because you know battle rapping is a different art than just rhyming so i just want to point that out and keep yeah. in mind battle rhyming because the fujis we came up battle rappers that's a whole nother thing so if you was to tell me to battle somebody right now that you would put in front of me you would be shocked you'd be like i'm telling you you could bring someone you think who's the dopest and put them up on me bar for bar you would bug the fuck out because <laughs> the art of battle rapping is a different thing so i have yet to see because you know that comes with scheme it comes with wittiness it comes with you know you, you you it's like you're playing chess so again i have yet to see because um again all three mcs are killers man clef for all those reasons that you just said i will go with the guy that actually has been in a battle before and has won a battle and was nominated for a Grammy for that battle record. Um, so he's been tested. Now he, he he was in another battle. He did not respond to that battle. And we won't we 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 obviously have noted that. But uh they're gonna force his hand and make him do something that people weren't expecting. And so for that you know, that's tear, ain't it? I'm gonna yeah, go well, with, I, I'm, I'm gonna again, go with it's, gonna, it's gonna be amazing. And again, I like when it stays on that level because yeah. that's part of our culture. And once in a while, we always see that duality with these wars, these hip hop wars, and we all get excited and we just want it to stay lyrical. That's all. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Clef, my brother, thank you once again for being generous <laughs> with your time. Absolute pleasure. For um, coming on and, and short notice and most importantly, providing information and being a great patriot for your country and uh, a leader as far as the, the space when it comes to music, technology and, and cultural influence. So definitely a hall of fame of first ballot hall of fame thousand percent um but like i said you know what, what he's done on the humanitarian side is is equally as uh impressive so thank you so much Child definitely i look forward to seeing y'all we're gonna get helen to get y'all numbers so we tap about what y'all gonna do and i'll keep y'all informed on haiti in the next several months so if uh the aid issue comes up i could talk to y'all more about that and see how y'all could help us get things out there for all sure. right appreciate for sure, it definitely I respect my families. All right, bro. Love. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. Shout out to Y Clef John. Yes. Legend in the game, ladies and gentlemen. That was something that was extremely educational. And uh yeah, shout out to Maydeen. Um, you know, that was the last minute. You know, it was one of these things, right? I was just watching Instagram. Once again, power relationships. I was watching Instagram and I saw he spoke on CNN. And I was, mm -hmm. I was like, damn, that's actually pretty insightful what he was saying. And I'm like, yeah, we need to get Wyclef on here to talk about Haiti. And um, yeah. I DM'd him, but he didn't get a chance to open it. So then I hit her because I, she hit me when he was in Davos. And um, I hit her and she was like, yo, you know what's crazy is after the CNN, this is what she said. She said, after the CNN, everybody was reaching out to him. CNBC, oh, ABC. Man. Everybody, he shut down. He's like, he didn't want to talk. He just wanted to, you know, the people on the ground through the work. He he didn't want to talk. He turned down everybody. Um, but he was like, oh, they called. All right, whatever they need. Like, <laughs> he was like, I got to do something for them. That's that's a no brainer. So she was surprised. She was like, yeah, I was. I didn't. I really thought that he would be like, no. But he was like, once I said you, you, it was you guys. He was like, oh yeah. For sure. That's, so man, yeah, that's why you gotta show up. You gotta show up in every room. Shout out to Wyclef, man. <laughs> and treat everybody to their level of importance, right? We we had a relationship with him. We spoke to his entire team, got connected with the entire team, and we made a call. Everybody is valuable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, thinking on the fly, watching all the content, like <laughs> it's a full time job, but uh great job, great call. Um to have him on. That was I mean imagine winning a war and then having to pay reparations and that's like, how they get you. that's how they that's how they get you and then insane, they, like, how they get you. i mean africa is the same all these countries same way. To, this day, to this day a lot of these countries they, they just had the um the thing where all of the countries like sierra leone and all of these countries i said they kicked the uh french ambassadors out mm -hmm. french was still getting paid um pennies on a dollar of natural resources from, from their former colonies in africa now like mm -hmm. now and it, they're strategic how they were colonizing, right? So it wasn't like French speaking, French speaking, so that you couldn't really have a conversation with the neighboring country because they didn't have the same dialect, same language. It's like a, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a yeah. diabolical plot, man.
Yeah. Confessions of Economic Hitman is another good book to read, but like Haiti's still going through mm -hmm. the financial war part of it. Like, and as soon as when I saw this started to break out, I'm like, they're going to send military in, find a way to take it over, extract all the resources. Same, same plan over and over. Gold, again, so. copper, all of it. Yep. Yep. Yeah, it's so, heartbreaking. Let's talk about. Um, all right, healthcare. Let's switch gears and let's talk about healthcare and the fight between Amazon, Apple, and NVIDIA to take over healthcare. Mm -hmm. You see, so you see, NVIDIA CEO says that digital biology will be one of the biggest revolutions ever. And there's a video of him talking about digital biology, which is pretty much humans' ability to dictate biology, where Obviously, throughout world history, biology is dictated through science, right? Like, you can't determine um, if your kid is going to be tall or not, right? You can't determine if your kid is going to have hazel eyes. It's just your DNA mixed with somebody else's DNA, and then there's a probability that they have it based off of your family history. But now, when yeah. you can actually determine your biology, right? You could determine how you look. You could determine, you know, if your kid is going to be, you know, six five you could determine if your kid is going to have black eyes or, or blue eyes um what kind of hair they're going to have like you can kind of you can play around with the biology so as you were saying that that's going to be one of the biggest revolutions ever then we also nvidia also announced a ai powered mm. um agents mm. yep. to replace nurses at hospitals or out outpatient um recoveries and um, the cost of this is going to be nine dollars an hour. That's the cost to run it. That's not the cost of a, paying a machine, but mm. the cost of it for like hospitals or providers is going to be nine dollars an, an hour, as opposed to you know nurses make one hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. Um, and it, it you know it, it says okay, have you taken your medicine? It's a video that we have on Instagram as well. Have you taken your medicine? Um, how do you feel? All of the stuff that a, a nurses, like I said, especially on a outpatient recovery path would do to kind of, you know, instead of going to the hospital and having a talk, they'll just be on an iPad in your living room and you can speak to them. So those are two initiatives yep. that two things that NVIDIA um, is involved with. And then of course we talked about Apple for a while, as far as their um, push into healthcare and then Amazon as well, as far as their acquisition of PillPack a few years ago and a few other different things that they've done. So all of these tech companies are positioning themselves heavy in healthcare. So how do we feel about this and, and who's the ultimate winner out of this? Um, hopefully Apple is for my reputation, but <laughs> ultimately I think NVIDIA is going to be the big winner. Um, the thing about Jensen, like when I was watching him at the conference, Jensen is like the new Steve Jobs. Um, Leather jacket on. I'll say, okay, swag. I'll see you. But um, the thing that I love about him is that he plans so far in the future and people don't really pay attention. Um, the partnership with Johnson & Johnson and GE Imaging probably will be impactful. But um, the thing that I noticed, he said they've been making this healthcare effort for the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. so, that part... I didn't know. I, I had heard some rumblings maybe four or five years ago uh, that they could make a move into the space, but they look like they have a pretty solid strategy. And if they can help companies be more effective, efficient um, across the globe, that's great. But healthcare to me is the number one sector that if you're not in, you probably are at a risk for being taken over in the next 10 years. So I know Apple's having issues with the iPhone. India is like the new promised land they need to dominate. But globally, Healthcare is a sector everyone needs to be in. Uh, aging population needs to be taken care of as we advance and have more wealth. There's issues that come with that. Um, so if they can find a way to use all of that data to help companies be more effective, healthcare hasn't innovated as fast as they can. But so if they can have a monopoly on helping healthcare companies innovate faster and produce more profits, NVIDIA should be the winner. I I think. They are they are the winner. I think that multiple companies could be the winner. I don't I don't think it's yeah. just those three. Um, from a standpoint of when you think about Nvidia, the one thing that they may be missing is the data. Who is the user that they want to get their products to? Right? They don't have that. Amazon has that. Apple does have that. Yeah. Now, obviously, they have the GPU that is going to help power that efficiency. So yes, if yep. all companies do them, they are a winner. But I think Amazon wins too. Right. Amazon wins because they have the data. Right. Because how many people are on Amazon Prime? How many customers do they have? 
do they have same day delivery they have the infrastructure to deliver on mm -hmm. the use case apple they have the data they do have the data they have the user case um like i said we, we talked about this plenty of times they know your health right they yeah they can track your heart rate right we can you know what i mean they they have that data too how they're going to incorporate it they haven't announced yet but in june i'm sure everybody's looking forward to it june 6th or 7th their initiative yeah. into the the realm of ai but we always talk about the ecosystem around nvidia and ai and so even in the article we're talking about uh companies like recursion and, and genetech who are helping nvidia inside of the medical field and so yeah. if we're going to say nvidia is a winner well who's helping them inside of the field of, of so healthcare like to to build so the there's pl I think there's going to be plenty of winners. Um, some of them are ob the obvious, right? The big dogs. But then there's, look at the companies NVIDIA is invested in, right? Inside of healthcare. They're going to help them with this initiative. So there's going to be a, a lot of winners, some that we know now, and some we got to do the research and, and track to figure out how we can be a part of it as well. Um, and I don't know if you guys saw, but Eli Lilly came out with an Alzheimer's drug that the commercial that. plan this week. So, so, so. Yeah. For sure. And once again, this goes back to, as he said, the power of information. And, and when he was like, like I said, we he was in Davos. We didn't get a chance to see him in Davos, but he, he was in Davos. But um a lot of times, like you you hear about things, um, and then months later, like that's when everybody starts to hear about it. Even similar to this show, like you know, we've talked about a lot of different things, and then months later it's come to fruition so even these type of conversations like it's in the news but it's like you know just take advantage of the information that you receive when you receive it because um sometimes it, it doesn't necessarily hit right now today it's like it's like planting a tree right like you might you you plant a tree today you're not going to see the results tomorrow right it might take six months it might take a year but when it when it does hit the people that actually were early on that soil are the ones that's going to reap the benefits and the rewards. So get your tickets to invest fest. Big facts. Great segue too. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's uh, good, a fact. Yo. It's a fact. Chipotle. Yeah. I mean, even with, even with the, some of the issues that Tesla was having, like we were talking about that late last year, I'm like pull back coming. Do you need better leadership? NVIDIA, of course, talked about that two years ago take advantage of the information if i made you money please put yes in chat but use the information even the geopolitical stuff that's happening in haiti now if the border issue doesn't get fixed you don't think this can happen here small city el, el paso small city in parts of phoenix like these things can happen really fast um so be mindful take it take uh use of the information um, you, you, you know, finding out who Drake and future beefing over ain't really going to help you get rich unless you academics or something, but <laughs> come on, man. Blackout going to be crazy too, bro. Shoddy. Good point. Disclaimer. We cannot. Yeah. Whoever your friends work is your friends work. Quit. We ain't never going to get a classic album over old girl at booby trap. Yo, shout out to everybody at booby trap. <laughs> Try put your hoodie on. <laughs> what? I wasn't Man. there. <laughs> oh my there. God. I don't recall. <laughs> Shout out to Dine and Ashley, though, but Jesus Christ. This is what we doing. Support Do the Google and Apple, yo. Pay the 20 billion so we can keep the partnership. Come on, man. Take Apple Gemini. Please. If you take fruit from a man's garden, be sure to replenish it Please. Twice, twice over, ideally. Or cash or ad, yo, what's up? Da, da, da. Cash considerations, you know, big facts. Three future draft picks, future draft picks, and, cra and cash considerations. Hey, man, come on, yes, come on, sir. Man. crazy, yes, sir. <laughs> Replenish the garden, <laughs> Chipotle, <laughs> Chipotle. Um, <laughs> be the one, be the one, put off plate. 50 to one stock split announced that last week. Uh, so first I want to talk about, I want to have a few conversations. Why is Chipotle stock done extremely well? And then also let's just start with a, what a stock split is for people that might be new to watching this program. Um, that don't even know what is, what, what that actually even really means. 
Um, a split is when they end up reducing the price. So the stock was at 3000 I mean, yeah, 3000 So a 50 to 1 split will put it at around 60 bucks and some change. Um, stock has done incredibly well. Um, and as a result, it was needed now. Um, NVIDIA has done it. Apple has done it. Tesla's done it. Mm-hmm. So whenever a stock gets too pricey for the average consumer, you have to find a way to bring the price down for it to be affordable, especially during when things may be tighter in the economy as well. So that, that's what a split is, a reduction in price. And so if, a, if somebody is a share owner right now, if you're a shareholder, you're going to get 49 additional shares, right? So for every one share yep. you get, it, it, the split is 1 to 50. So you're getting 49 additional shares. Now you have more shares. Does the value of the the money that is in that share, it doesn't change. It's just that it brings in, like Ian said, new investors. It becomes more affordable, right? So when somebody, just imagine you're looking at something that's $3,000 for something that's $65, you're more inclined to say, I can invest here at 65, which will bring more money into it because more people found it more affordable. Um, but that happens with great companies. We've seen it five to six times from the Magnificent Seven for sure over the past four years. And so this is another one. And usually usually it's like a four to one or a three to one. It's 50 to one is is a lot. But, you know, that's, that kind of saves. It's like Tesla one time did it like two stock yeah. splits in like 18 months. Um, yeah. But this this brings them from three thousand to sixty, so now they have a long climb back up to that three thousand range. So yeah, it makes it more affordable. It also helps as far as institutional buyers, mm-hmm. um, ETF, different things of that nature. So the valuation of the company will go up because more people will buy the stock. So that will have a higher valuation for sure. Mm-hmm. And um, most companies, as you said, have done that, with the exception of Berkshire Hathaway. <laughs> they Warren Buffett does not believe in stock splits. I, I yeah, believe I have to uh, Berkshire Hathaway, the A shares are like almost six, 600,000, something like that, um, per share. So yeah. um, he, he has a different approach for, for stock splits, but everybody else kind of thinks in the same manner where it, when it becomes too big in the, in the thousands, that's why you don't see stocks at like $10,000 mm-hmm. per share or $5,000 per share for the most part. Like when it gets to that couple thousand dollars range and it usually splits. So, um, yeah. So that, that split is going to take place on, I think they have to vote for it June 6th and then it'll probably happen on June 18th. So, I mean, if you buy, uh, the stock now, I mean, it was up at it was up at three thousand. I know Captain Literal people are like, well, it's not three thousand. Well, it was at twenty nine ninety nine. Okay, that's funny. All right, so yeah, it's trading around twenty nine hundred. So yeah, yep. it, I mean, if you buy it now, if you buy it then, the, the value is going to be pretty much wherever it was the, when you got it, unless obviously it depreciates yeah. before that time. So all right, so that's the educational stock splits. But why has Chipotle done well, and what is the future of Chipotle? And is this an opportunity for people to buy the stock now or wait, or what's the deal with that? Um, a couple of great reasons. Uh, fast casual company, but they are a little bit of a premium fast casual dining experience. Um, great customer service, simple menu, great leadership. But if I look at like the stats on the business, operating margin is 15%. The profit margin is 12%, which is amazing. Um, they are a healthier version in comparison to McDonald's, Arby's, Burger King. Um, But if you look at something like institutional ownership, 96% Mm. institutional ownership ratio, amazing. That's safety locked in side of a stock. And if you look at the short ratio and short percentage of float, only 3% of all investors that own these shares are shorting Chipotle. (laughs) So 97% of people are going long on the stock, pause, no ditty. And 96% of institutions believe in it long term. When you have faith in a company like that, and they do, and I, every time you go in Chipotle, line is packed, yo. Some things are just an eye test. Walk in, see how quickly can you order, get in, get out. How many customers are coming in? Uh, market cap of forty one billion. They did uh, nine point eight seven billion. Like they're a machine in the fast food in the fast food area, and they've taken even though McDonald's used to own them at one point. They're kind of creeping into McDonald's territory with a better or stronger business model. And you don't see that many people clamoring to brag that they're eating at McDonald's anymore. Chipotle being a healthier version um, has done an amazing, uh, an amazing job at branding and marketing yeah. and keeping those high. 
Yeah, I, I think the Brandon is, has been brilliant. Um, the, the the model that they've had to have people in line, the the marketing of having fresh food that's big. Everybody knows people want to have fresh food. It, it, it's just yep. been brilliant. When, when you talked about the profit margins, I think that's one of the keys, right? And this is a, admittedly, and I said this maybe a year ago, and I said it probably two years ago. I'm like, I didn't, I didn't have Chipotle in the portfolio, and this was one of those regrets. Um, but that's going to increase when they talked about their future guidance. They're looking at AI to help with the functionality of service. And so now when Shop you that have, walk. <laughs> this is what I'm saying. When you have, if you think about it, they've already had the portion sizes already trained from their employees. And so imagine when it's robotics that's just doing the portion size. And so if you can in, incorporate that, now you're not hiring as many people. The The meals mm -hmm. are still going to be fresh. You have a manager there. You, you're talking about profit margins are going to increase as well. Um, it's a, it's a great company, great stock. And, you're right. It doesn't feel like it fits in the category of fast food, right? It's not your McDonald's. It's not your Burke. It, it yeah. just doesn't fit in that category. Um, and it, they have the technology component, right? When we're talking about how we order the food, how we can get the food, but they also have give backs, man. I don't know how many times I've seen it, right? Like, Hey, it's national burrito. Like that also helps customer retention. People want to come back because Absolutely. they know when they shop there, their loyalty programs exist. They, they've got a great marketing and a great branding product. And, uh, I, I mean, even at 65, I think it's, it still climbs. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, it probably in the four-year cycle should get back to 240, 250. Um, and it's one of those ones, like, the regret of missing out. Like, whoever drafted Sam Bowie <laughs> over MJ, that's how I feel about Chipotle. I'm like, mm, I don't know how I missed this one. They have some deep drawdowns when they have them. Yeah. But they've always recovered and provided a multiple of three. So. Yeah. I think like in 2000, maybe was it 20, maybe 21, when they had that that deep pullback, there was um some food poisoning uh, issues that they were having with lettuce yep. and I think the chicken. They all have it felt like it happened in like a three month span, and since yep. that moment they've corrected that. They have just been on a tear, an absolute tear, yeah. absolute tear. Everybody else in fast food, better look out. I know Cava is another one that people are talking about, but Chipotle is a clear winner. I mean, but here's a concept: if you buy food, you want it to be fresh and not four days old. And not stepped on from your manager's boot. <laughs> <laughs> a frozen patty play, <laughs> for, for real. Like, come on, man. The hey, that that pink slime hurt McDonald's a lot, yo. I know y'all got the little real estate portfolio, which Don Peoples will love, but Don Peoples would not go for the pink slime that y'all put in all them products. Like, people wised up. That going back to the same thing, with Boeing. Boeing CEO got let go of. <laughs> Your job is to take away all risk away from the business. Like if the core product does not work well, eventually people are going to find out. The era of being able to hide those mistakes and not thinking the public is going to know. Even the people that are working on the jobs now are recording everything and exposing what's going on. Make sure the product works. When when you say pink slime, are you referring to the chicken nuggets? Yep. They're, well, they're not chickens. Like whatever that you know, was. Okay. Yeah, whatever that was. Shout out to the McNuggets. Test tube chicken. <laughs> so before we before we leave, let's do a uh, before we leave, let's do a day to the dump it situation. Yeah, let's do it. You know, there's some interesting ones in here, Ian. Um, and when I, I looked at some of the charts, and you know, we always talk look for the trap the charts that look like a hockey stick. Um yep. I want to start with one because it caught me off guard when I when I looked at it. Obviously, someplace that we all have visited at some point if you've had a used car. Or if you had a new car, if you need something for it, you go to AutoZone. So ticker mm -hmm. AZO, um, just, I mean, up 26% year to date, up 36% over the past year itself. When we talked about Chipotle and how expensive one share is, AutoZone is trading uh, around 23, a little bit over 2340. Um, yeah. It's the largest retailer of aftermarket auto parts and accessories in the United States. I mean, the chart looks ridiculous insane right talk to us about AutoZone, man we dating we dumping what we doing uh long-term date should propose should marry with no prenup like auto zones on fire uh gross margin 51 percent institutional ownership is 97.5 percent only two percent of the people who own the stock are short in it profit margin is 14 percent which is amazing for the business that they're in and i really can't identify when they've had a bad year, like post I, I didn't see one. Yeah, I didn't see one. <laughs> like after 2010, kudos to the management. 
customer service is pretty solid, but the management has done a great job at pricing, uh, retention, repeat sales. Like this look like what Snapchat chart should be, or if TikTok was allowed to be publicly traded, maybe after Kevin O'Leary buys it, it will be. <laughs> but um, AutoZone has been on a complete tear. Um, 2008 when it was down. Uh, but if you look since 2015, it was at 658. I mean, it's at 3,200 now. No yeah. stock split in sight. Like almost a monopoly in their space. So you have to hunt for businesses that are doing good that m many people are not talking about if you want to get an edge in the market. And this is a clear example of uh, of one. And then if you look at their moving average as well, they normally hover above that 100-day and 200-day moving average and don't pull back to it often. Amazing company. Amazing yeah. company. And when we talk about interest rates being high, car auto loans, interest rates being high, more people will, will probably go to the used cars route or keep the car that they have. When you have that, you're yeah. going to have maintenance. I mean, it's a perfect setup for them. All right, let, let's go to one that we spoke about, uh, another great company in the retail sector, Lululemon. Now, we talked about Nike and how you know they had a, a pullback uh, when they reported. Lulu reported on Friday. They were down uh, on Friday uh at the opening over the past month, they're down 15%. What's your thoughts on Lulu? Are we dating? Are we dumping? What are we doing? Big date. Um, STK date weekend, not date day, date weekend. <laughs> um, gross margin, 58%. Profit margin, 16%, which is great for that space. Mm -hmm. um, institutional ownership is 87%. Doing like $9 billion in revenue. Uh, this is one of Ty's favorite stocks he's been in, I think, since 2016. 2020 it got down to 144 the pullback i know a lot of people are talking about it i wouldn't worry about it long term um i do like it if it gets down to like 340 or 342 i would love to buy in there but yeah lulu is um definitely w one of the bright spots in that retail sector while they're getting beat up because they have a higher price point mm -hmm. lulu limit is definitely a, a buy long term yeah I, I listened to the ceo speak and um Watching him speak, I saw why I pulled back. They talked about the future guidance for the first for the first uh, half of this year, some of uh, the second half of this year. Um, but there was a bright side, and that was international growth, and that's yep. always a market, right? When we're talking about health and wellness and athleisure wear, I mean, after Nike, I think they're the first people, the first thing that people are starting to think of, think so. which leads to yep. the other point that leads to the bright side, and that's brand awareness. There's still people who are not really as familiar with the brand, um, and so there's always a growth opportunity. So. I'm with you on. We, we got to date this thing long term. All right, here we go. Everybody wants to hear about it every week. Let's talk about it. Super Microcomputer Inc. ticker SMCI. Everybody watches it. I feel like it moves with, with NVIDIA, right? So if NVIDIA is up, Super Micro is going to be up. When NVIDIA pulls back, there's going to be a pullback. What's your thoughts on Super Microcomputer? We dating? We dumping? What are we doing? Um, I wouldn't dump it. Um... I would definitely take it for a date, but I think it's the Larson Pippen play. Like Marcus Jordan got in a little bit too late. <laughs> so I'd rather have NVIDIA. You know what I mean? I don't want the girl to look like the girl that I want. I want the girl that I want. You know what I mean? But SMCI is great. Um, 8% profit margin. I wish that was higher. Um, institutional ownership is at 72%. So that makes me a little bit weary. In comparison, so um, I would definitely take it on a date, but I think a lot of people are catching on the, to this one a little bit too late. Um, so I'm kind of in between. It's, it's a tweener for me. It's a tweener. All right. How about this one? Uh, PepsiCo. Uh, we haven't talked about them in a while. We took a PEP. Yeah. And most people obviously know their, their brand product, Pepsi. Um, they're moving international. They announced that they have uh, $400 million that they're spending in factories in Vietnam. Um, they obviously are launching new products. They caught us off guard with that starry thing. I was like, what, what happened to, <laughs> what, what happened to, what was it called again? The, their competitor Sprite was, uh, star, you know, um, it was trash either way. It was, it was bad. It was bad, but now starry is the new thing that they have. Uh, so what's yeah. your thoughts on, uh, PepsiCo? Obviously a lot of people like it for a dividend play. What's your thoughts? We did we dumped it. Uh, they made a misstep with that one drink but overall like great ceo i love the ceo there um they kind of end up being like the, the new coke no pun intended gross margins 54 percent operating margin 13 percent amazing um short percentage of float 0 
not even one percent of the investors like will short the stock hmm. um kind of like autozone hockey stick up into the right chart and that's been since 2008 like 2008 they were or, or nine they were at 50 bucks i mean not many companies almost give you a guaranteed return but if you hold for a long period of time pepsi's done amazing especially under uh this ceo so definite uh definite date sierra miss that was got great. you yeah sierra miss yeah, that, uh, that was it that was it missed up all right you want to do one more yep all right let's do one more all right enbridge ticker e and b uh, so they own and operate pipelines throughout Canada and the United States, transporting crude oil, natural gas, and natural gas liquids. What's your thought? We dating, we dumping, what we doing? Time to break up. Charlie, I'm going to pull your move and go ghost. Um, <laughs> I want to tell you more than one time anyway. So uh, stock peaked in 2014, um, and it's been really range bound from 45. It got to a low of 23 bucks in 2020. Of course, they recovered from the end. It's at 35.72 now, but I think the best days are over. Um, I'm sorry, baby, but it's not me. Well, it was not you, it was me. So, Enbridge, uh, definitely not going on a date. And, and we got to dump Enbridge if you're in it. So, best days are over. I got to go right now. Hey. Hey, this is what I do. Hey, I have more work on me that I need to do. And I don't want you to be phased by the bullshit that I'm doing. So, I'm going to just let you be free and but when i get better i'm gonna come back to you okay i'll be back before you know it yo <laughs> blackout on wednesday yep game dash disclaimer please <laughs> get there early start watching it at 9 59 get there early because oh, well. uh, he, he, he uh he didn't waste any time it's a lot of spice in this and that. good lessons in the spice but man dame went crazy that's, that's my tribal brother but i will say for any time that i frustrated you i'm sorry and if i ever cut you off i'm so sorry next blackout shawty you can talk the whole episode but just keep me on mute i said bruh we, we learn as we go peace to dame <laughs> peace to dame man that was uh learn from the mistakes of others entertaining to say the least man blackout wednesday 10 o'clock eastern standard time Damon Dash will be in the building. Um, tomorrow, one o'clock, we got a dope episode. Ingrid Wines, Ingrid Best uh, has a wine company, South Africa. Our best wines. Um, and of course, we have Don Peebles on Thursday. We got an action packed week. Don Peebles right. teaching a class for EY University. He's a billionaire, by the way. Um, <laughs> Get there. Yeah. If you are a member of EYL University and you're not watching that webinar, you're doing yourself a tremendous disservice. Big fact. Yep. Big fact. Join us on the Stock Club call this Saturday. So Market Mondays, EYL Tuesday, Blackout Wednesday, EYL Thursday. <laughs> Dominate. Dominate. Saturday. Adam, it's over with. I told you. Don't have Dominate. baby up there going crazy. <laughs> Y'all drop no. a little. Keep big brick baby safe. Brick baby, what's up, man? Come slide through, do the show. We'll keep you safe. <laughs> Over for the vultures, Brick. y'all. <laughs> Brick baby, what happened to Brick baby? The the security dropped the location of one of his ops. Why he had to show? Oh, word. Oh, when they ran, they ran up on him. No, they ain't run up on him. But like, you wilding, bro. That's that's reckless. You gotta keep yeah. the Caltech with you. <laughs> well, I see. I, you know, Adams, his his location is right. It's on. It's on. Um. No, Rose, like he has a prime location and, and he has his local outside on. So it's not like he's indiscreet. He's like, a, he's on a, he's, he's there. Like he's like a landmark. Um, yeah. If you, mistake. you just, yeah. 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 Trying yeah. times out here. That's a fact. <laughs> that is trying that's times. A, that's a fact three. Yeah. Well, boy. Good Friday is here. All my West Indians, go get your Easter bun, go get your cheese. Uh, and then happy Resurrection Sunday in advance for everybody. Um, have a great weekend, man. We'll, we'll, we'll see y'all tomorrow for Earn Your Leisure. We'll see y'all Wednesday for Blackout. We're just going to dominate the whole week. Red Panda on Saturday? Yeah. That's a fact. And then Thursday we'll be down people. So, yeah, we're going to dominate the whole week, y'all. Y'all be good to each other. Uh, love is week. love. <laughs> Thank you for rocking with us. We'll see you next for week. Real.